Good day, everybody. I am going to be presenting to you a lesson on forces. Uh, but as we are going to go through this lesson, you must understand that we are going to go through quite a number of terminologies, some of which will be very new to you. Now, I will want you to listen very attentively as we go through the lesson and jot down the very important terminologies definition that I'm going to be presenting to you. Some of this, present, uh, some of this will be uh, shown behind me. Uh, those terminologies, some of them are force, pull, push, magnetic field, electric field, gravitational field, contact forces, non-contact forces, and so on and so on. Now you need to be very attentive and ensure that you jot down the definitions of these particular uh, new terminologies because at the end of this lesson presentation, you are going to be assessed on the worksheet on the vocabulary or terminologies as well as the small quiz or a very short quiz that will assess you on forces. Now, the big question is, what is a force? A force can simply be defined as a pull or a push between the two bodies that are interacting with each other. Now, what do we mean if we say pull? Pull means it's when you are dragging an object or a body towards yourself or you are dragging an object along with you uh, towards yourself. And a push is when you move an object away from yourself or you are moving an object away along with yourself like in the case where you will be pushing somebody uh, alongside you. Now, what is very important is you cannot be able to see force, but you can only witness the effects of force. Now, what are the effects of force? Force can make an object to move. Force can make an object to stop moving. Let's take, for example, a car is sliding down a slope and it suddenly hits the wall in front of it. That car will stop because it experiences a force. A force can change the speed of a moving object. For example, if an object is moving and you apply a force, that particular object will start moving faster. So the force will increase the speed of the moving object. Force can also change the direction of a moving object. For example, if you see a car moving and there is another car that hits the car on the side, the car that has been hit will then change direction because of the force applied by the coming car on the side. The force can also change the shape of an object. If you are having a can of a cold drink, it is shaped in a cylindrical uh, manner. If you squeeze it, that shape will change. The force can also change or can also cause the closed object to open. For example, if you are opening the bottle of water, you twist the cap and it opens. Or when you open a door, you push the lever down and the door opens. However, it should also be noted that a force can have no effect at all on the two interacting 
bodies. For example, look at my hands now. If I push my hands against each other like this, I am applying the force on both of my hands, but nothing is happening. Or consider yourself pushing against the wall of your classroom and there is nothing that is happening. It does not mean that because there is no effect, there is no force that has been applied. So the force has been applied, but there is definitely nothing that is happening. That is very much important. Now, a force or the amount or the quantity of the force applied is measured in a special unit called a Newton. Newton is a special unit for force because uh, this unit has been given based on the recognition of the scientific or of the science uh, of the physician who developed the force, say Isaac Newton. And this Newton, it is actually the force required to move one kilogram of a mass of an object in a distance of one meter in one second squared. That is what a Newton is. You will see later when we are dealing with calculation of a force how this uh, derivative of an SI unit is reached at. There are different types of forces. The first type of a force is a contact force. A contact force is a force that is experienced when two interacting bodies are in a direct content, contact with each other. When they are in a direct contact with each other. That is a contact force. Right. For example, friction. When a car is moving on a tarred road, the tires of the car are in contact with the tar road and there is a frictional force that is experienced because the tire is now in contact with the tarred road. So that is a contact force. Twisting. If you twist and open a can, it's a contact force because your hands are in contact with the cap of the water bottle. So we are saying that that is a contact force. If you push a car, you put your hands on the body of a car. That is a contact force and it will cause that particular car to move. Now look at the picture in the following slide showing example of contact force in our everyday life situation. Think about more additional examples that you can give. Surely you have seen so many things happening around you which can be an example of a contact force. For example, a donkey pulling a donkey cart. It is actually a contact force as well. The second type of a force is called a non-contact force or a field force. Now, a non-contact force is a force that results between two interacting bodies which are not in a physical, physical contact with each other. So it means it is a force that is exerted over a particular distance. Field force, it is called a field force because it is caused by the field around the object. We'll later look at what is this field. The types of non-contact forces, one is the gravitational force. The gravitational force is caused by the gravitational field around a celestial body. Now, what is a celestial body? 
if we look into our solar system, all the components of the solar system makes up what we call the celestial bodies. Your Earth, the planets around it, the asteroids, uh, the meteorites, and all those part of our solar system we call the celestial body. Now, the gravitational field, it is an area around a celestial body where in any other body will experience a gravitational force. Now, in the case where you get out of that field, you will no longer be able to feel the gravitational pull because you are outside the gravitational field. For example, around the Earth, there is an area around the Earth where you will experience the gravitational pull or the gravitational force to the Earth. And once you are out, we are saying you are now in space and you can no longer feel the gravitational force towards the Earth. Now, what is the gravitational force? Gravitational force is a force of attraction that two bodies have on each other as a result of their masses. So it is important to, to note that the gravitational force can only apply when you have a particular mass. Now, the bigger the mass that these bodies have, the stronger the gravitational force. And also, the distance between these two bodies also play a very important, significant role because the closer these bodies are, the stronger the gravitational force. Now, let us look into our next slide where we are going to look at our solar system. Now, in the solar system, right at the center, there is a sun which is far much bigger than the individual planets around them. Now, because the sun is very big, it is pulling all the planets towards itself by what we call the gravitational force. But because these planets are also bigger in size, they are also pulling the sun towards themselves. And as a result, these planets can no longer move towards the Earth, nor move away uh, from the Earth. Now they start to revolve around the sun and they follow a particular path that we call an orbit. So it is important for you to understand that the force that is holding our solar system together, we call it a gravitational force. Now, let us now bring this to our own situation on the Earth. Now, the gravitational force on the Earth, we call it the weight. Now, the weight, it is the force with which the Earth attracts the object towards its center. That is what we call the weight. So we must understand that the weight, it is actually the force, and therefore it is measured in newtons. But the mass of an object, it is actually the amount of matter that makes up that particular object. The amount of matter that actually makes that particular object. Now, since all the objects on the Earth are far smaller than the mass of the Earth, they will experience the same acceleration due to gravity, irrespective of their mass. For instance, if you take a tennis ball and a short put steel ball, and you drop them from the same height above the Earth, all these two objects will reach the Earth at the same time, irrespective of the short put steel ball being more heavier or having more mass than the tennis ball. 
This is because these two objects, they increase their speed at the same time up until they both reach the earth at the same time. But the only difference will be as they hit the ground, the steel ball will have more impact as it hits the ground than the tennis ball because the steel ball has got a bigger mass. But they will all be accelerated towards the earth at the same speed. The weight on the earth is calculated using the mathematical relationship between weight, mass, and gravitational acceleration. Weight is given by a letter W, which will be equals to M, which is the mass, and G, which is the acceleration due to gravity, which is constant. And it is given 9,8 meters per second squared. So this mathematical relationship, it is actually the one that is used to calculate the value of the weight of an object. If you know your mass, you can therefore calculate your weight on Earth because you know the gravitational acceleration of the object on Earth to be 9,8 meters per second squared. Now, the gravitational acceleration differs from one planet to the other. For example, when you are in the moon, the gravitational acceleration on the moon will be far less than the gravitational acceleration on the Earth. The gravitational acceleration on the Earth is 9,8 meters per second squared, but the gravitational acceleration in the moon, it is actually 1,6 meters per second squared. Now, what does this mean? This means that your weight on Earth will be more than your weight on the moon because the gravitational acceleration on the moon is less than that of the gravitational acceleration on the earth. So you will have less weight on the moon than your weight on earth. However, your mass will remain the same whether you are in the moon or you are on earth. That will not affect your mass, but the difference will only be on the weight. Now, what is very important again, it is that gravitational force is exerted in all the objects on the earth, including even our bodies as humans. The second type of force, of non-contact force, is the electrostatic force. Now, the electrostatic force is also, called, is also caused by the electric field. Now, what is the electric field? The electric field is an area around a charged particle around which any other charge will experience an electrostatic force. Electrostatic field is an area around a charged particle in which any other charge will experience an electrostatic force. Now, electrostatic force is therefore defined as a force between two charged objects whether they are same charge or different charges. The force that is experienced between two charged particles, whether they are of the same charge or opposite charge. The following slide will show you the field, the electrostatic field that leads to repulsion and attraction. Static electricity, it is resulting from
from this electrostatic force. Sometimes you have seen that as you rub your pen or your ruler on your hair and you bring that ruler next to the small pieces of paper, you can see the small pieces of papers jumping to the ruler. What is actually happening there? Now, in this slide, you will see that a person is rubbing a ruler, a plastic ruler with a cotton cloth. Now, as you rub this ruler, the electrons then are transferred from the cloth to the ruler, making the ruler to be negatively charged and the cloth to be positively charged. That is how you can be able to charge any other object by rubbing. Now, as you rub, you will have either positive charge or a negative charge. Now, when you have a negative charge and a positive charge, they will attract each other. But as you have a negative charge and a negative charge, these two charges will repel each other. This repulsion and attraction, we call them the electrostatic force of repulsion, the electrostatic force of attraction. Sometimes you can also charge a particular object or ourselves as human beings. We can charge ourselves by using what we call van de Graaff generator. Now in this slide, you will see two ladies. The other one is touching the dome of van de Graaff generator. Now as they touch the van de Graaff generator's dome, the electrons are transferred to the lady who's holding the dough. And these electrons are now distributed all over her body. And all the hair, part, uh, hair follicles and the hair will be negatively charged. Because each hair will be negatively charged, they will now start, because they are lying next to each other, they will now start to spread out. As you can see, the lady there uh, is touching the Van der Graaff dome and the hair is spreading out. The hair spreads out because all these hair particles are being charged by negatively charged particles and they repel one another. The third force, which falls under the non-contact force, is the magnetic force. Now, the magnetic force, as well, because it is a field force, it is caused by what we call the magnetic field around the magnet. Now, what is the magnetic field? Magnetic field is an area around the magnet where any magnetic object will experience a magnetic force. And this field is actually running from the northern pole to the southern pole of the magnet as it has been shown in the slide there. Now, if you bring the northern pole of one magnet and the southern pole of another magnet closer together, they will actually attract each other. If you bring the northern pole of one magnet and the northern pole of the other magnet closer together, they will repel each other. Now, you can be able, because you can't see the magnetic field, but we can demonstrate that there is magnetic field around the magnet. How do you do that? You take a magnet, put it under a white paper, and sprinkle the iron filings around the area where you have put your, ma your magnet and you will see the iron filings arranging themselves in a particular order, demonstrating that there is something that is around the magnet. And that is what we call the magnetic field. Now, the Earth as well, it's magnetic. It has its own magnetic field. However, the difference between the Earth and the permanent magnet is that 
the earth magnetic field runs from the south to the northern pole. But the magnet, the magnet has got the field running from the north to the south. This brings me to the end of my lesson and now you'll go to the assessment where you'll complete the vocab vocabulary worksheet. Thank you.